Hello and welcome back everybody to another 10 Shadow video. Today we are looking at the new FS Academy Jetliner series. In this series, we'll learn the basics of how to operate an Airbus A320neo. Now, before we dive into the lessons, there are a couple important items that you should be aware of. First, at the time of this video, the very popular fly-by-wire A320 is not compatible with this training series, so make sure you pick the default Asobo A320. And the next thing to mention is if you are a subscriber to Navigraph's FMS data for Microsoft Flight Sim, that is also not compatible with this training series. So make sure you uninstall that before you begin. And last but not certainly least, make sure you read the Jetliner manual. That manual is so packed full of good information that you're gonna to need to be successful in this training series, especially if you've never flown an Airbus before. So definitely check that out first. Now, I know a lot of new simmers just wanna jump right into an airliner, but I highly recommend you re uh, resist that urge and start training at the beginning like a real world pilot. On my channel, you will find the complete VFR and IFR training series by FS Academy. I highly recommend you check out those first, but if you were like me and you do this backwards and go right into the airliner, this training's for you. So let's get started. This is FS Academy Jetliner. We're going to introduce you to airline operations step by step, starting with a complete short haul flight. We're in the A320neo and have just finished our pushback here at London Gatwick, bound for Barcelona. Make sure that the APU is running and we'll talk about jet engines. All right, so we'll get the APU running. If you hit control eight on your Windows keyboard, that'll bring you to your overhead. And here is the APU. So. The master switch is already on, so we'll click start to get that going. The A320 thrust levers have a set of detents that you'll need to be familiar with. Move the levers all the way forward to the toga position. And you can see in the new series, they have actual checklists that you can do, so that's pretty sweet. This is the toga detent, which stands for take off, go around. This setting will give maximum power when required for takeoff on a short runway or to initiate a go-around. It would be hard on the engines and use a lot of fuel if we used maximum power for every takeoff. So instead we use a reduced thrust setting known as flex. Move the levers back a little into the flex MCT detent. This is the Flex MCT detent. Flex is a reduced takeoff thrust setting when maximum power isn't needed, saving fuel and engine wear. MCT stands for Maximum Continuous Thrust. Whilst TOGA provides full power, keeping the engines at 100% thrust for longer than about 5 to 10 minutes can cause excessive wear and damage. MCT is a slightly reduced power setting, but it can be set for an unlimited time without fear of overstressing the engines. Here in the flex detent is where we'll set the levers for today's takeoff from Gatwick. Move the levers back another notch to the climb detent. Okay, go on the climb. Unlike in a Boeing aircraft, Airbus thrust levers do not move in response to the auto thrust. Instead, the levers are manually placed into the climb detent shortly after takeoff, where they will remain for the majority of the flight. The auto thrust can control engine power as needed, with the levers remaining in the climb detent the entire time. Finally, bring the levers all the way back to idle. All right, go on idle. This is the idle detent, where the engines are at their minimum power. In the final moments before touchdown, you'll move the levers here to reduce thrust for landing, and this will automatically disengage the auto thrust system. This is also the position used for starting the engines. Set the engine mode selector to start. 
Okay, you can get there quickly by control six on your keyboard. Here's the engine uh, selector. We're gonna send that to start. Now set the engine one master switch to on. And flip that on. So we're gonna check this status now by hitting control three. A jet engine typically has two main fans at the front of the engine, one big and one small, known as N1 and N2. Each fan is connected via a shaft to their own set of turbine blades at the back of the engine. The N2 fan is the smaller of the two and starts turning first. Once it gains speed, the air it moves gets pushed over the turbine blades for the N1 fan, causing it to spin. Okay, see the engine is starting up. I really like the new Good. objectives now they start got here. Engine two. Okay, so we're gonna start engine two this time. I'm just gonna go down here and click it. There we go. And engine two is starting. And two is rotating. Fuel starts being supplied at around 20% N2, at which point the exhaust gas temperature, EGT, starts to rise and N1 starts to spin. Okay, there, EGT is starting to go up and N1 is starting to move up as well. We got the well, looks like the oil pressure is starting to uh, rise as well. Both engines are now running, so we'll perform the after-start flow. Okay. So let's just hit uh, control uh, six again. We'll hit this to normal mode. And we'll hit control eight to get up top. We're gonna turn the APU bleed off and the APU master off. Okay, and the spoilers, I believe that is control seven. It is. Here's your spoilers. You want to grab it, click, and pull up. See this little white band here? Spoilers are armed, and then your flaps here go to one. Good. Now that we've completed the flow actions, we complete the after start checklist. Anti ice off. Ecam status checked. Pitch trim set. Rudder trim. Zero. After start checklist complete. Just like on a small aircraft, we check the flight controls for full and free movement before departure, starting with the ailerons. Yep. So the flight controls button here doesn't work, so we're just going to jump on the outside of the aircraft and do that. So we need to follow what he, he says. So we'll do ailerons full left. Full left. Full right. Full right. Neutral. Elevators full up. Full up. Full down. Full down. Neutral. Okay. Left rudder. rudder. Full left. Full right. Full right. Neutral. Neutral. Right. Great. The flight controls look good. Jetliner 488, clearance available. Ready to copy, Jetliner 488. Jetliner 488, cleared to Barcelona via Novma 1 X-ray, runway 26 left, altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 7402. Jetliner 488, cleared to Barcelona, Novma 1 X-ray, 26 left, altitude 5,000, squawking 7402. Jetliner 488, read back correct, report ready for taxi. We've 
just received our ATC route clearance. We're departing via the Novma 1 X-ray departure from runway 26 left, climbing to an initial stop altitude of 5,000 feet, which is set. We're ready to go. Let's request taxi clearance. Jetliner 488 request taxi. Jetliner 488 taxi to hold short runway 26 left via Papa Alpha Sierra holding point Alpha 2. Papa Alpha Sierra holding short 26 left at Alpha 2, Jetliner 488. ATC have given us a taxi clearance to holding point Alpha 2. That's pretty much the full length for runway 26 left. Clear left side, clear right side, turn on the taxi light, release the parking brake, and we'll get going. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn on the taxi light, which is up here. And then your parking brake is back here. Click that guy. Oops. Oh, that's right, I've got my Bravo throttle here holding that down. So there we go. Parking brake. Taxi six. ahead and turn right at the end onto taxiway Papa, then follow Papa around to the left onto Alpha Sierra to hold short at Alpha 2. Use only the minimum power you need to taxi at about 10 to 15 knots as we're making some sharp turns. All right, so you see here on the screen real quick, I just popped up my iPad and we're right where the uh, pink arrow is. So we're gonna go up Kilo turn right on Papa and go to uh, Alpha Sierra and stop it at Alpha 2. All right, so we are good to go. Let's turn on track IR. And give it about maybe 40%. Get us started here. Now we're moving, give the brakes a squeeze to check that they're working. Okay. Brakes checked. Brakes Keep are checked. Taxi and take the next right onto Papa. Now, something I have noticed, sometimes um, the objectives don't go away. They don't get checkmarked. I don't know why, even though you, you know, you did it. So it could be a bug, but if that happens to you, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to fail. So just make note of that. Okay. So I'm going to bring it back down to about third, around 35 ish. So we're going to clear there on the turn left. right here and follow Papa to the end, where we'll turn left to Alpha Sierra. Whilst taxiing, we run through the PEDS check, which is a brief recap of our departure. Performance, departing from Alpha Sierra for 26 left, as expected. Engine out, if we have an engine failure, at 1,700 feet, we would turn left to Willow. Departure, Novma 1 X-ray, runway 26 left, is on our clearance and in the FMGC. We are cleared. We continue. Stop altitude, 5,000 feet from ATC. Okay, we're going to be making a left right here. Alpha 2, come to a stop here. Great, now set the parking brake. All right, set our parking brake with the Bravo. Now we're at the halting point, we'll complete the before takeoff checklist. Flight controls checked. Briefing confirmed. Flap setting, config 1. FMA and takeoff data, V1 blue, V2 magenta, climb nav 5000 blue, 1FT2 flex. Transponder set. ECAM memo, takeoff no blue. EFB stowed and disconnected. Down to the line. Okay, we've completed our checks down to the line on the checklist. We continue below the line once we're cleared for lineup. We'll return once the cabin crew reports that the cabin is secured for takeoff. All right, folks, we'll see you on the next one.